What's happening, everyone? This is Neil Turbin and Juan Garcia from Body Count. Hey. Agent Steel, yep. Evil Dead. And we're here at Rock for Ronnie 2023. That's right. Here at the Penn's Bowling Center out here in the valley. That's right. Studio City. Studio City, baby. Yeah. So it's a, you know, me and Juan go back a ways. Like yeah. we, we were doing gigs back in, uh, you know, San Diego, Arizona, yeah. all kinds of places. Absolutely. And uh, that was with Agent Steel, right? Right, right. And then he, we even did one with Evil Dead, because we did yeah. uh, House of Blues, right? Yeah, that was a sick show. And Hyrax was yeah, on that Hyrax. one. Yeah. That's the old House of Blues, Sunset. On Sunset Boulevard, yeah. That was, that was a great show. And MX Machine, and, and Cage, right. and Neil Turbin. It was uh, amazing. Well, it's so great to ca finally catch up with you, Juan, because yeah. I mean... Now we've known each other forever. Yeah, you're, you know, you're playing with uh, Ice-T. Yeah. He's smart and he knows how to get people's attention, and uh, you need that in the business, I guess. Yeah, he's, 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 he's he likes to say, uh, I've been your age, you haven't been my age. Meaning, he has a lot of knowledge, and, and uh, it's, yeah, he's a very smart guy, for sure, and, and great lyrics, visionary, yeah, for sure. You, even the early his rap stuff is fucking sick as hell, too, six in the morning, and course all the other stuff you know it's got to rub off on you a little bit after yeah, a while yeah i mean i was listening to ice t uh the freedom of speech stuff uh, back in the day before he, the body count record came out and i always envisioned his 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 voice on a on a rock track and, and lo and behold he came out with the body count stuff a year or two later so was it a was it how did you you know come into the band how did you find yourself in body count um i was working at a record label and I, I've been friends with Ernie C and D Rock and Vince and those guys from back in the day. And I, you know, I was working on a DMX album. I was putting together all the all the music. I was like the director of operations, making sure all the clearances, the ISRCs are on the digital stuff, all the nerdy shit. But anyways, um, so the, the label had background with hip hop. So I so kind of a light bulb went up. Huh, I wonder what's what Ice is doing, what Body Count's doing. So I contacted Ernie and, and Vince, and they had, ironically enough, they were working on some new music. I presented it to the label. They, they were more on the hip hop side, so then I turned it on to some other friends of mine at another record label, Sumerian uh, Records, and they jumped on it right away. They wanted to sign the band, and the, the Manslaughter record came out in 2014. And then, ironically enough, they needed a guitar player, so they hit me up to. Um, do a show with them and with with, uh, with Slayer in, in Texas, and you know one thing led to another, and, and here I am. Yeah, that's so great. Basically, was trying to help them out, get a record deal. That's all. I wasn't even trying to get in the band. I was just. So you knew all the guys in the band, and then Ice T met you afterwards. Yeah, yeah, we were rehearsing, and and then he, you know he asked how I met these guys and stuff. And yeah, totally. Yeah. So it just kind of was like hanging out with the family, basically. Basically, at that point. yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Um, it's, it's been a great experience for sure. And did Ice-T work with you at the label at all for any reason? Or he, no. he, he, this was the other guys that had the knowledge of that or just he, your friends before that? Yeah. Uh, no, he didn't work with the label uh, before that. No, he, he, I met him through Body Count and, and next thing you know, we're on stage rocking. That's great. Yeah. So has that, you know, changed your perspective? I mean, you were playing in Evil Dead and you're playing in Agent Steel for years. And of course, you're in those, you know, those are your bands. I mean, you I, put in so much work to those bands. I've always been an uh, Ice-T fan and I was always a Body Count fan because I saw him back in the day on the early tours. So, and, and friends with Ernie and, and Vince. So, I mean, it, you know, when you're a fan of the music, you, you just get it right away. You just, you know what they want, what's, what works and what doesn't. And um, yeah, it's it, it's great because uh, in Agent Steel and, and Evil Dead, you know, I, I, I there's so much involved that I had to take on hands on, you know, being in, in a band and stuff sure. with the music and everything. With Body Count, it, it's just nice that you know everything's there. The booking agent, management's been there. Right. So, you don't you don't so have to do I, everything yourself. No, <laughs> you don't have to do everything yourself. You know, like just go to the guitar, go, go, go to the rock. stage, go to the hotel room, go to the restaurant, go it, on the it, bus. It's <laughs> awesome, man. I mean, you know, there's work involved, but it, it, it's uh, it's a lot of fun and. and I take a lot of pride in it because, uh, first and foremost, I'm a fan of the band. I guess it's a lot easier to, to be a golfer if you're not having to also mow the golf course and, <laughs> right, exactly. and then plant it, yeah, too. Yeah, no, it's nice to, you know, have text to tune your guitars and here you go, man. And you get, you know, rocking these giant stages and stuff. It's awesome. That's cool. Well, you've been there, you know. Yeah, sometimes. 
But uh, you know, you're you're there and you're playing all these festivals, you're playing all these tours, and you're doing it. And yeah. ha- as far as the album is concerned, are you guys working on a new album, new material? Yes. Uh, the new record's called Merciless, and it's coming on 2024. Um, not sure the date yet. I, I would think by June because we're doing a whole European tour. We're playing Rock and Ring, Rock and Park, and and Nova Rock and. All of June 2024 will be in Europe, so I, I would think the record would be out by then. It's really up to the record company sure. at this point. Business guy. Yeah, it. yeah. So, do you have songs? Are you co-writing in that band? Uh, on the new record, I did not co-write. Um, a lot of stuff was done with Vince and the producer Will and, and uh, Will Putney and Ernie, Ernie, and, and also uh, what do you call it? Um, Ice, <laughs> of course. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, he wrote all the lyrics and part of the music. So no, I, I was more hands-on uh, on the uh, record before Carn. What's the one? No, uh, Bloodless record. On the okay. Blood, Bloodless record. We got nominated for a Grammy. That's awesome. Song Black Hoodie, which I was involved with, and I was very proud of that. Good one. And then, uh, ironically enough, in, on the second, on in 2020, we we actually won a uh, Grammy for uh, the song uh, Bum Rush. At the carnival record. So you got one on the shelf. That's good, man. Yeah, it, it's kind of surreal, man. I mean, we, it's, I didn't get into music for that. You know, I got into music because I, for the passion. But it, it's it's nice to be, uh, you know, recognized. And obviously, uh, a lot of it is because of Ice. You know, of, of course, he, you know, he's a star and, and he deserves it. Well, he's got good people backing him up. That's yeah, for man, sure. It, it's great. Support it's great. team. Yeah, it's, it's great to be involved in and wanted in, the, in a band like Body Count. So tell me about Agent Steel, John Cyrus. So you, I mean, he's a great singer, as we yeah, know. for sure. And, uh, you know, you're busy, and yeah, he's I, doing Agent Steel now. He is, he so, is. So how, tell me about it. that. Um, you know, he, he, he's, he was there from the beginning. We, we did a Skeptics Apocalypse. It came out in 1985, uh, and... Uh, He's out there doing some shows in Europe, and I think it's great. I think it's great to keep the name alive, and, and you know, I, hey, I'm a fan of the music. I, I'm a fan of the of the album, so I think what he's doing is great, you know? Well, that's super, and, you know, I mean, it's... I it's, support it. It's great that your creations are out there rolling, and you, yeah. got, you got Evil Dead as well playing. Yeah, uh, we've been working on a new Evil Dead record all year. I, I hope to have it out next year. That's been a lot of a lot of work. Any any title for it or any idea? Uh, well, the song the, titles. Yeah, we, we we put out a single in April called "Bathe in Fire." Um, that's out now. It, it's just it's a single. It's it's not as uh, fast as the rest of the material. We just kind of wanted to throw people off with with, with something a little different. Um, so we have ten new songs. Um, I haven't really uh, talked about any of this stuff, but. Um, we, the concept of the record is based around fear, how the media and um, the powers that be always control with fear. So it's kind of like a fear of everything kind of concept of how they keep us in line by pumping us the fear, for, the fear you know. Uh, so I can relate. That's kind of like the concept of the record. And, you know, um, we got Dan Goldsworthy doing the album cover. He's doing some renderings right now for us. So we hope to have that out next year. A few years ago, they had a lot of fear going on. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I didn't want to get into all that, but yeah, yeah. It, that's kind of like the concept. Well, that's one of the songs, which is called, I guess I can reveal it now, it's called Fear Porn. So it's Fear Porn. Porn, yeah, yeah, like Fear Porn. And that's, like, and that's like, an somebody, ex- like a person who, who's, uh, who's just binging on fear, like the news, er- everything around him. And that's he, an exclusive because nobody knows that no, that's no, a song no, on the no, album no, no, no. for <laughs> Evil Dead. But yeah. now you know. Yeah, fear if, you don't, if you didn't know, now you know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know? <laughs> now, now you know. Yeah. yeah. So. And Juan Garcia, man, it's so amazing, beautiful to see you, brother. Yeah, man. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah, for sure. I mean, we go back a ways. We were hanging out. Our first time I saw you was, and I, I, I always say this story, at the Country Club with Anthrax. You were up there. Dude, it, it was fucking a ama- fistful of metal. It, it was. Fistful thank you, man. It was amazing. It was an amazing show and an amazing band and, and you know, a great songwriter. Well, thank you. And we're still here. And yeah. you know, you're with a Grammy, so Fuck now yeah. I got to go write some songs and try to catch up oh, somehow. Yeah. You will, and yeah, you will. I mean, maybe nobody will hear it, but at least if it sounds good, I'll know it was. Hey, man, your stuff's oh, always good. Man. Maybe, maybe I'll get like a a, a, a hot pretz, a mustard, and a, and a pretzel or something. <laughs> you know. The, at the county fair, you know. Are you ready to bowl tonight? Yeah, we're gonna bowl for Ronnie. That's right. What's your fondest memory, or do you have any memories with Ronnie Dio? I, I do. Uh, one of the, one of the ones I recall right away is seeing him live at the LA Coliseum, 
downtown with Heaven and Hell. Well, it was Black Sabbath, but they were touring the Heaven and Hell record. And it, it, it obviously was Black Sabbath. However, it, it was just so different to have Ronnie sing those songs. So it, it was crazy, man. It, that's like the first, it's just imprinted in my, in my, in my You mean You mean the Sabbath songs that he yeah, was singing? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and yeah, the Sabbath songs, but he, I think they were doing some other stuff too. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. I mean, seeing Ronnie, I saw him when they recorded uh, Heaven and Hell. Uh, in 1980 at NASA Coliseum, the See, movie. He, he, that's that's crazy. That's because I go way back. But right, uh, right. no, but I do. You know, of course, I knew Ronnie from the Rainbow, the, the, you know, his Rainbow material. And, and but yeah, that's the memory is the LA Coliseum. And it, and it, and it was an impact having those crosses with that oh, tour. Yeah, yeah the yeah, big crosses, the up. slanted crosses, the big ones on stage, and then the fires coming up when he's singing, making those faces and his horns, and yeah, yeah it's, it leaves an impression when you're it does. when you're a teenager. <laughs> For sure. Hey, I think, I think April Wine. I don't. Even, I'm trying to remember who opened that show. I think it might have been April Wine or Head East. One of those. Cool. Yeah, that was yeah. that was the 80s. <laughs> that's cool old days. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. You saw him in eight. In, in, in I saw Bl- Blue Oyster Cult. It was black and blue. That was the, the the show. They have a you know you could look at it online or something. I mean black and blue show. And um, I was there. I was I was re- really young, and my my family had to come pick me up because I was still that young, and we were at the um, NASA Coliseum. So. They had to come get me at like four in the morning because that's when the concert ended. <laughs> well, thanks, Juan. It's a pleasure, yeah, man. Always, man. You're, you're awesome, man. It's great to see you. Let's go. Let's go knock down some bowling pins at Bowl for Ronnie. What's happening, everyone? We're here at Bowl for Ronnie 2023 with the one and only Sean Killian from the band Violence, one of the amazing thrash bands from the Bay South, you know, from the Bay Area. And uh, Sean, who is, um, you know, here with us tonight, and you're telling me a story that uh, is quite profound and, and amazing, uh, you know, your struggle to come back from yeah. the other side, man. Uh, I had a medical, medical condition, uh, a uh, genetic deal, deal. It's called alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, and alpha-1 antitrypsin is a protein that cleans your liver cells and your lung cells, and uh, it was 51, and I had full-blown cirrhosis from the uh, disease. It's a genetic thing. And then uh, went through hell for about, you know, 20 months, maybe, and then got a, a what they call a living donor transplant. So. Wow. Yeah, um, I can't even. Somebody gave up sixty-three percent of their liver. <laughs> they uh, they went into the operating room before me at seven. I went in at nine. They were out at noon. I was in there till uh, I think I got out at like ten o'clock at night. And the next day, I got up. I was in the uh, ICU, and you know my doctor before the surgery said, "Oh, we want you to walk." So. <laughs> Again, I wake up. After, get up out of the bed. I wake up after two days of being sedated. Oh God! And the nurse is all. I'm like, I need to walk, and she's all, well, What are you talking about? I'm like, Yeah, I need to walk. So I sat. So up. you're telling the nurse that? Yeah, I said, Well, my doctor said I need to walk. So I sat up, and they got this killer walker with brakes and everything. And the, my surgeon turns the corner and comes. As, he sees me getting up, and the nurse turned white, like she saw, you know. That's Dr. Robertson was like, oh, well, he wanted to get up. <laughs> so, yeah, they want to clear you out of the bed I so told, you can, so you can put them, someone else in there and well, collect some money. Well, he wanted to get and walk because a lot of people, you know, they'll lay in bed and not do shit. And it's a great thing it's to a good thing. Get, so the, get, I was the, up, get the muscles working. Yeah, I was, un, I was under for two days, and when I, they woke me up, I fucking got up and said, let's walk. And push well, this stroller around. Well, and, that's amazing. So yeah. before that happened, you know, you had this condition, and, you know, you're playing with your band for years in the yeah. earlier days and I mean it got to a point you, you know you could tell me that I mean you had to deal with this this condition this personal medical condition yeah that, that basically was shutting you down I mean it was something that you didn't ask for but it was I was, wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy but here you are that, uh, killing yeah. it with with violence I mean you guys are playing around the world and you're here in LA you're yeah. not even from around here but some of the band is right there oh yeah coming down Lord LA Ringer and Bonded by blood. And well, I mean, you're, you guys are here because you're doing a show in L.A. Yeah. But you're also at the Rock, the Bowl for Ronnie. Yeah. 
here and um you know so it's a, a rare occasion to have you to come and do this and it was like oh yeah i'm doing that that's really awesome and um you know, so you guys had a benefit. Wasn't there a benefit in the Bay Area? Yeah. The, that happened. Uh, it was a big benefit. Uh, Phil Demo a lot of bands. put on a golf tournament for me, and that raised a lot of money. And then we did a, a benefit show in San Francisco, and it was crazy. It was packed, sold out. Some great musicians. They all sang violent songs. You and know. when did that happen? Uh, that was like, uh, I think it was in January, and my surgery was in March of 2018. So yeah. 2018, okay, so yeah. they had a big benefit and then... Yeah, and, raised, and, raised enough money to, so my family could still be, my kids could still do what they needed to do, guys. you know, because I wasn't able to work, so. But that money helped, you know, keep our lives normal. Yeah, so that was kind of cool. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. So, so um, to, to be able to, you know, come back from the other side, basically, and, yeah. you know, re reestablish yourself in... In, in the music world, I mean... Well, to reevaluate my life and say, I'm not going to lay on my deathbed and say, I wish I would have done this or done that. So when I felt better, I sent a text to Phil saying, uh, you know, uh, we should do a show. And he thought, what do you mean, like a movie? Go to a movie? I was like, no, man, we need to play a show. This was like eight months after my surgery. And, and then we booked uh, uh, the Metro in Oakland, uh, it was, uh, April, I think it was April 13th, and, but the uh, first, show, first show sold out in five hours, so we booked Sunday a matinee show, and that sold out in like four minutes. So, yeah, it was like, yeah, we gotta, we gotta keep doing this. So, and we wrote the EP that came out last year, Let the World Burn, and uh, it's had, you know, a lot of great response. Did some videos, we're on uh, Metal Blade Records, and yeah. Well, that's really inspirational. We're just out taking the music to the world. You hit a ball already, guys. Come on, we need to wrap it up. You guys are the last guys here, guys. We'll have to continue this in another yeah, spot. Yeah, we'll do it outside. So we're here with Sean Killian from the band Violence. We're here at the Pins Bowling Center. There's a big pin right there. And uh, if you got your bowling ball, bring it on down because you can go bowling. Yeah. Cool place. We're at Bowl for Roddy. So how was your bowling game tonight? Uh, it was so-so. I'm not really a bowler. That's all right. I, I was, I, you know, we'll be out on a Saturday, and we have a bowling alley close to the house. And nice. We'll be like, ah, I don't want to go to the house yet. Let's <laughs> hit the bowling alley. So, so, so I was bowling in the lane next to John Bush. Oh, right on. And it was funny because, um, you know, we're talking and we're bowling and, you know, having a good time. And... So the end score, John Bush and me, we had the same score. I won't talk about the score, but we had the same nice. score. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I was hoping I'd get more, but it was like, it's cool. John had the same score. I had the same score. We had fun. That's what counts. That's and we're here matters. and we're here for, you know, good reason, good we're, cause. yeah, we're here for, you know, the Dio Cancer Fund, both for Ronnie. And it was yeah. a, an amazing night. I just saw Wendy Dio on the way yeah. out amazing. and she's a, so, always so gracious. And um, so it's so cool though that, you know, Sean is here with the band Violence to play at 1720, right? You guys are playing. 1720, uh, Saturday. Uh, I think the doors open at 630, but there's a lot of bands, uh, some great L.A. bands. Uh, Warbringers are direct support. So. Great, great, great band, yeah. too. Yeah, great band. And um, so, so you guys are touring, or these are one-offs? No, this is our last show of the year. Okay. Uh, we'll be going to South America in February. I noticed there was a tour. I don't know if it's advertised already. Is that already out there? Yeah, for South America. Yeah, yeah. I was seeing that. I think we got like eight, maybe ten shows. You know, your memories of Ronnie Dio, I don't know if you met him or if you had interactions with him. Never met him. Because you're up there in the Bay Area, so yeah, he's down here. I saw him, uh, I forget what year it was, but New Year's Eve, they played the Olga Coliseum, and Dio did. And I went there by myself because I was like, I got to see... Deal. So you went on your own. You didn't take anyone with you. No, no buddies, no nothing. I just bought a ticket and went and checked it out. And but I did see him with uh, Black Sabbath at the Cow Palace. Uh, there was a Southern rock band that uh, supported them, but I forget the name of it. But uh, it was a great show. And you know, those are kind of things that you don't forget. Yeah, well, you wanted to be there. You wanted to, you know, that was something you oh, yeah. you loved and you appreciated yeah. it. Yeah. And, and I feel the same, you know, it's like what sometimes you just got to step out and do what you want to do because you, you, you know, everyone else just decided to go somewhere else, but this is where you're going. And yeah, you know, well, and then it's like, uh, you know, the guy's got, was, had such a 
massive voice, you know. It reached you. Yeah. It touched and, you. And, and it wasn't like he was this monster guy, you know. But when he's, you know, saying it was like, it was pure power. My first exposure to him was Rainbow. Yeah. yeah. Me too. With Richie Blackmore. Me and, too. Yeah, it was just, you know, incredible. One question I wanted to ask you about your singing. How do you sing now as opposed to when you first were in, you know, you first established violence? You know, do you approach anything differently? Are you, you know, kind of, uh, you know, are you stepping on the gas pedal all the way? Is it 100%, 1,000%? Or is it, you know, do you, did you do it a, a, in a way that was reckless back in the early days? Or is there any difference? Or, you know, I mean, well, obviously you learned some things, right? So when I joined violence, uh, Phil and I, we worked at the same place. And Zet, Steve Zetro Souza. I know Steve, great my guy. Bass, the great bass singer. player, Dean Dell. We all worked at the same place. And Dean came to me and said, hey, you know, Jerry Burr, he, uh, he quit the band. And so we don't have a singer. So I went up and to Phil and found him and said, hey, you know, I heard you lost your singer. And he's all, yeah, you know, Jerry's going to change his life and whatever. And I was like, you know what? I'll try that. You know, I never sang in a band, never did anything. And so uh, he said, okay, I'll give you a tryout. And he gave me the lyrics. And I was like, man, these lyrics suck. <laughs> <laughs> so I rewrote, I wrote three songs. Uh, Eternal Nightmare was the first song I ever wrote uh, the lyrics for. And uh, went in to do the tryout. And everyone's like, who the fuck does this guy think he is? And Phil, Phil in the band, and the guys in the band at that time, because Phil was in the band, yeah. and the other guys in the band, they didn't know if you could write or not. They didn't have an idea, or did they? they? Didn't, I didn't know I could write. This is know? great. So I walked, wrote some songs, three songs, and went and tried out. And you know, Perry, the drummer, was he's got a serious attitude, which is you know, part of who Perry is. But they were all like, who does this fucking guy think he is? Rewriting all the lyrics, you know, and trying out. So I didn't get a call back or anything to hear from him. A couple of weeks later, I saw Phil at Ruthie's Inn. And I was like, so uh, what's up? He's all, oh, you know, Jerry decided to come back. So then uh, that's my Phil demo. And so then uh, <laughs> a few weeks later, they had a show at Ruthie's and they didn't have a singer because Jerry left again. And so he, he called me, oh, you want to do the show? I was like, well, how many songs, you know? Because I only had three written for that tryout. And he's all, well, I think we gotta do like seven songs. So I wrote four more lyrics. He already had the music. So I just wrote my lyrics on top of And you're writing music. the melodies too, right? The lyric me melodies? Uh, yeah, violence doesn't really have melodies. Okay, well. It's all about hardcore. Because I kind of was influenced by a lot of punk rock. Got it, but it's know? still a melody. It's still yeah, GBH and Fear and you know, we exploited, which we're getting an opportunity to play with them. That's and, great. It's a uh, hardcore I think melody. it's in March at a festival in Belgium. Nice. So the exploited and us, it's like, oh my God, are you kidding me? And that's the cool thing about, you know, uh, I never had like uh, this intention to sound like anything other, what was important to me was the lyrics. So when I wrote the lyrics, it kind of came out the way it sounds because of the lyrics, less than me going i want to sound like this or i want to sound like that i just wrote the lyrics and the vocal patterns with the music because it's thrash and it's hard thrash how much different sean is the the delivery of the music today the sound of the band compared to the original early sounds of violence i mean how how has it changed and i know you have ira black in the band now yeah. and i mean you have a strong lineup no doubt yeah, and we do just what is the the you know the sound difference to you as, as a singer and the leader of the band well when we uh recorded uh let the world burn and wrote that rec that ep it was released last year um it was COVID, so we there was no all our shows got canceled but we were like you know we're gonna give a fuck about that shit. so we were in the studio just we took the time to write so it was just me and phil uh perry was in the studio on his drums and it was a rehearsal studio it wasn't like we were in some big studio and I had my little uh, like 16 track recorder I could like hold under my arm and we just track stuff and you know the music and then I write the lyrics and come in and try it out and make some adjustments but it was always we need to be as hard as we were when we did Eternal Nightmare and Oppressing the Masses because uh, anything less I think our you know hardcore fans would have been like hey, wait a minute what are you guys trying to do but we did approach it with a more mature perspective you know where it's like yeah you know i want to uh i wanted my lyrics to my vocals to sound a little more deep but still not lose that sound and you know for me i remember eternal nightmare came out there was no internet or 
Instagram or Facebook. So you would read magazines, and half of the reviews were, this singer sucks. And the other half were like, oh, my God. You know, so it was kind of like love it or hate it at that time. So when we did uh, Let the World Burn, I was kind of like trying to mature. Relate to that, but yeah. you had a mature approach. And I meant to say in the last uh, comment that I made, you know, lead singer of the band because there's no leader i mean you guys are a band so everybody's part of it so i'm yeah. not i didn't mean to Im impress upon people that you know everybody's working for you but maybe no. they are but no, <laughs> maybe maybe if you got the check and they, well, you're paying everyone the thing is with, uh, i'm sorry i said that the thing is with me it's like uh we did uh um california Uberalis. i did a a session uh what was it uh snorting whiskey drinking cocaine that's really cool and it all sounded like violence because my voice is violence and there's no i don't you know it's like whatever i put my track my track onto whether we record something or it's going to sound like violence because that's you know that's my sound well you know you know something that's interesting is um you know people that love motley Crue or they don't love motley Crue or they they love vince neil they don't yeah. i mean whatever vince neil sounds like i mean you know it's vince neal i mean that's what i believe oh, yeah. and when you hear ozzy i mean you know it's ozzy it doesn't sound like somebody else it sounds like ozzy and whether they're the best singer or not the best singer i mean that's irrelevant because it's like that is a brand that is a a, a benchmark of a sound and having that versus sounding like every other high-pitched singer or every other yeah. growling singer or every you know to have something that's unique or that's specific and you know that is really a, a um, signature right that yeah. that you have and to sing snorting whiskey Tr pat travers i mean that is um <laughs> that's an interesting song to pick yeah. but but it's cool that you guys uh, did that and uh, you know i love the fact that you, you step out of the box and do something outside of the comfort zone because that's really it what was because when i recorded when because christian oldie wolbers it was just me and him in the studio all the music was recorded and it was just he and i doing the vocals and he's all Dude, don't try to sing this song. Try to be, you know, make it yours. Be yourself. Yeah. yeah. And so that song, California Uberalis, they're not like, they're our, it's like they're ours. We made it so it sounded like us. Well, I hope you guys do some more. I hope you do some more of that oh, yeah. kind of work. Oh, yeah. I love playing. Well, you know, I love punk rock, so I love GBH. You know, I always did. I love industrial music. I don't listen to a whole lot of heavy metal these days because uh, a lot of it kind of sounds similar to each other. And So what heavy metal bands out there that you've heard in the last number of years, you know, stands out to you, not just because they can play well, but, you know, from a, a writing standpoint, is there some band or bands that you can yeah. think of that, you know, you, you know what, you'll listen to this band because they're kind of interesting or it does, it, it's... You know, sometimes it might not be what's expected by the public, but it's like, well, you just like this band, you'll listen to them. Uh, that would be Behemoth. Behemoth, okay. Yeah. That's cool. Nurgle, the whole band, they're so creative. And it's like uh, they've been around since the early 90s. And uh, for me, and, and I like other bands in that genre of death metal or black metal, whatever you want to call it. But uh, Behemoth is very creative to me. And when I listen to them, is there any lesser known bands that are maybe more underground or any bands that are totally in a different genre that are not even something that you think Sean Killian would be listening to? I listen to Twin Tribes. Uh, I love Susie and the Banshees. Well, Susie and uh, The Cured. Old school. Depeche Mode. You know, I like, uh, you know, that post-punk stuff or, you know, the dark wave. Because nice. it's like the same kind of notes and the same kind of, you know, feeling yeah. in that music they actually have clubs in la that um cater to the dark wave and stuff yeah so it's kind of cool you know and i dig that stuff it's because it's it's dark the lyrics it's a vibe it's yeah a cool it's a vibe. vibe and it kind of because uh we went to see twin tribes in sacramento uh i forget what club it was but i got to talk to the two guys and we uh i think it was joel the bass player he and i talked a little bit about oh you know Oh yeah, I just played this festival and I love Dark Wave because it's kind of like metal, just not you know with the fast guitars and all that. And uh, he uh, mentioned a band. Um, geez, I forget the name of the band, but uh, we just played a festival with him like a couple weeks before, and it was like yeah, you know, 
it's like that genre of music I really enjoy, and I enjoy punk, you know. So you mentioned that you were, um, when we were talking a little earlier, you were mentioning that you were working on new songs for 2024. Yeah. So anything you could tell us about, um, you know, well, um, you're working with Metal Blade, I believe. Metal Blade Records. Uh, Heidi is our, she's, she manages our band with Metal Blade Records. Great. Uh, she's great. She's a, she's a big violence fan from when she was younger. And uh, it's a great relationship. And, you know, Metal Blade was there from the beginning. And, you know, we were young guys and made some decisions about what label we wanted to be on. Uh, Metal Bay was probably the place we always belonged. And so... Uh, Makes sense. And California yeah. label originally. Yeah. And we're writing... Uh, I've written like three songs of lyrics, you know, without music. So go record them on a click track. So, uh, th so those songs now being studied by the other members or... Uh, well, I got to go record them on a click track. Okay. So you're still kind of... Yeah. It, uh, working on it very on the early end of that yeah we're getting started we, hopefully we can release some stuff you know today's it's kind of crazy because you want to do an album but everything winds up digital on the internet or spotify or apple music whatever so it's almost like you release it's almost beneficial just to release one song at a time i understand yeah. you know and then maybe put that all together as an album later it's like what's old is new. What's new is old. It's yeah. we're back to the model that they had back in the fifties or sixties. That's yeah, what they exactly. did. Yeah, exactly. Singles, you know. Singles, yeah, yeah. I mean, back then it was it was what forty fives. <laughs> yeah. Before that, it was seventy eights. Sun Records. Then it became thirty threes, right? I guess. Elvis Al LPs. And Elvis and Johnny Cash and all those guys. That, you know, Sun Records was a big uh, you know part of that. And I love all those bands. So you don't. So you don't have it where the rest of the band has really gone through the tracks yet, or kind no, of. No, not dug no. In. But Phil has some music written that I wrote some lyrics over. But, okay. Which is our typical format, but I wanted to kind of change it up this time. So you have a different approach to some of your songs. Because I want to make it more. Because uh, it's always been violence. Uh, I write over the music, but which I is a, which is a sense of a formula, sort of. Yeah. It I is. mean, a violence way of writing. Yeah. But now you have a different violence I way of writing, too. I want to do it a little bit different. So yeah. you have more than one way For to me. write. Which is great, because yeah. that just shows that, you know, you guys aren't stuck in one mode. You have yeah. multi-modality, multi-ability to well, they're step great out of that. Well, you know, Phil and you know, Christian Oldie Wolbers. I mean, you're talking about some top-notch guys. Most I mean, definitely. Christian's done some serious stuff with Fear Factory. And, and all your guys have, including yeah. yourself, you know. You're well, I've only ever done violence. I never. People it's go, pretty, what did pretty, you do pretty successful. It's like, mm, I never was in a band. I just said, hey, I'll try that. And I was in that band, and that's all I've ever done. When they fly you to places and they pay you to play and they feed you and they put yeah. you up, I mean, that means something. I mean, you know, they want to yeah. hear you. Yeah. And that's great. That's success because, you know, how do you measure that? Well, that, that every, every, and it's like we never really toured back in the day. So right now it's like. Now is when it's happening. You know, we've been to Vietnam and. That's amazing. Thailand and Singapore and Australia and New Zealand. And it's just about, you know, bringing that music to people. So you're, live. you're breaking new ground. You're making new fans. You're breaking new ground. Yeah. Just, like, just like a brand new band. Just like a young band. Yeah. And the crazy thing about violence, it's like multi-generational. So when we did a, our first uh, reunion show at the Metro in Oakland, it was, uh, I was out, we had a meet and greet. And I think 50 people came to see us, you know, the meet and greet. There were 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds. 25 30 year olds and this the young kids they weren't going oh my dad was into you so i am they were like oh i was listening to this and the algorithm popped you up and i listened to you and it's like holy shit i dug it and thought i i thought i'd never see you and you know and now we're back and so wherever we go it's always this like maybe three or four generations that come out to see us play well i really it's like something that's really cool i really appreciate it sean i want to be respectful to you and your lady we're here at the end of the night at yeah. uh, at the bowl for ronnie and i'm sure there's other places to go let you guys have yeah, other things you gotta hotel and then practice <laughs> tomorrow and then uh, we'll be at grill them all tomorrow oh, nice. they made some violence fries cool uh that's at 7 30 and so we'll be there doing a meet and greet and then saturday night at the 1720 club i'm pretty sure this will be out there by the 7 1720 uh venue club uh, get date on the next day but hopefully this will get out there so people can go to the Grilla Mall yeah. and um, any any song titles or any album title idea yet is there anything that's even no. in the in the works yet or nothing that's really concrete or decided upon or discussed or I got some titles but we don't want to 
press you if you don't have. No, a, I don't want to. I don't want to put them out there because you know in the early stages of riding. Yeah, unless you have things something. change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, but I have to ask those kind of questions because oh, that's sure. that's what that's what they pay me the big bucks for. You oh know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's such a pleasure, man. I'm, I'm really to honored you. to to meet you yeah. and to to have the opportunity to speak with you for the Metal Voice. And um, you know, I want you guys to just kick, keep kicking ass like you're doing because you know you're you, you've just you've come back from a place where people don't get to come back from, and you're yeah. you're really true. You know, inspirational to me because it's like. You know how many people can can do what you did you know what you're doing yeah. because it's like when you're when you're down and you come back up that's how i look at it it's like you know we i do this i mean i don't do it to make money i do it because i love it and because I, when i'm on my deathbed i want to say i don't want to re- have any regrets and you know if i didn't do this now i think i'd have some regrets thank you so much so now Sean. i'm doing it thank you brother right on you Cheers, guys.